Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go. Racing. Come stay up. Let's go, racing boys. My name's Eric Pate. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Racing with Eric Pate. I'm your host, Eric Pate. And today we're going to talk about um, the Richmond race. We're going to go through the two race results. Um, instead of me having it typed up, we're going to do it how we did old school. Well, by old school, I mean I'm just going to go ahead and read you guys off the race results. Um, mainly after that, we're going to go to controversy of the week. And we're going to, I'm going to be going to be recording the controversy of the week and our two laps from Michigan on my computer. I am a promise is a promise. I am still gonna race as the winning card number for the two laps session from Richmond. I, even though it was the three car, we'll talk about Austin Dillon here in just a few moments. Um, but we'll, we'll we will watch the controversy of the week and my two laps on my computer here in a few minutes. And then I'm going to go through the playoff field, what they look like as of now. Talk a little bit about playoff eligibility. And then my picks for Michigan. Um, we, we're going to start as usual. We're going to do the inverted field, which is Martin Truex was dead last. Ryan Priest finished 36th. Parker Retzlaff, 35th. Corey E. LaJoy, 34th. Riley Hurst, 33rd. 32nd was Harrison Burton, 31st John Hunter Nemechek, 30th Daniel Hamrick, 29th Eric Jones, Alex Bowman was 28th, Justin Haley was 27th, Ty Dillon was 26th, 25th was Ryan Priest, 24th was Austin Sendrick, Zane Smith was 23rd, 22nd was Ty Gibbs, 21st was Chase Briscoe, 20th was Noah Gregson, 19th was Joey Logano, 18th was Chris Buescher, 17th was Todd Gilliland, Rakusowski, 16th, 15th, Michael McDowell, Josh Berry was 14th. Uh, speaking of Joe Lugano, we're going to talk about him in a few moments as well. 13th was William Byron, Kyle Bush was 12th, 11th was Ryan Blaney, 10th was Daniel Suarez, 9th was Chase Elliott, 8th was Carson Hosevar, Kyle Larson, 7th, Christopher Bell, 6th, 5th, Ross Chastain, 4th, Bubba Walls, 3rd, Tyler Raddick, second, Denny Hamlin, and our winner was, like I just mentioned, he was Austin Dillon. We're going to talk about how he won that race in the controversy of the week. Actually, we have two controversies of the week this week because we want, we're also going to take a look about what happened on pit row post-race with Joey Logano and why Joey Logano and Austin Dillon, Austin Dillon both got something they, I think they deserved. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's start off with stage one with the results of Josh Berry, 10th, 9th, Tyler Reddick, 8th, Chris Buescher, 7th, Austin Dillon, 6th, Chase Elliott, 5th, Bubba Walls, 4th, Joey Logano, 3rd, Mark Truex, 2nd, Denny Hamlin, 1st, Christopher Bell. For stage two, they end like this. Chase Elliott, 10th, Carson Hoss of our 9th, 8th, Bubba Walls, 7th, Tyler Reddick, 6th, was Michael McDowell, 3rd, Fifth was Austin Dillon. Fourth was Joey Logano. Third, Danny Hamlin. Christopher Bell, second. Daniel Suarez got himself some stage points this week by winning the second stage. I think having this new tire is awesome. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the playoff picture. Um, and then we'll talk about the controversy of the week. And then we're going to go through the truck series side of things. And then we'll watch our laps. And then... Well, of course, we'll finish off my picks. So right now, the playoff picture looks like this. Uh, uh, I should probably hit playoff picture first. So Kyle Larson is obviously in with four wins coming at Vegas, Kansas, Sonoma, and Indy. Denny Hamlin in with wins at Bristol, Martins, Bristol, Richmond, and Dover. Christopher Bell is in with wins at Charlotte, no, at Phoenix, Charlotte, and New Hampshire. William Byron is in with wins at the Daytona 500, Coda, and Martinsville. 
Ryan Blaney is in with the wins at Iowa and Pocono. Tyler Reddick is in with a win at Talladega. Chase Elliott with Texas. Brad Kozowski with Darlington. Alex Bowman with the, with Chicago. See what I did there. Joe Legano, the week before Chicago, got in at Nashville. Daniel Suarez with a win at Atlanta. Austin Cindric, Worldwide Technology. Martin Truex is plus 78. Um, I think if he can just... Think if he can, I think if he can get away with a top 10 stage points or no stage points, I think that should be enough to get him into the playoffs. Ty Gibbs, he needs to do something this weekend if he wants to feel comfortable about making the playoffs. Going into Daytona, I would say Chewex or Ty Gibbs should probably win Michigan so they don't have to stress about Daytona. Bubba Wallace is in by just three. I think he needs to go ahead and that or Bubba Wallace needs to go ahead and win Michigan. And Chris Bush, our defending Michigan winner, is tied with Ross Chastain. And basically everybody Ross Chastain down is in a must-win situation. No, Chase Briscoe down. Chase Briscoe's negative 99 below cutoff line. I think everybody under 18, 18th and down. Everybody 18th and down. I would say they basically need to actually... Not basically need to. They need to win. If they want to have any shot to get the 2024 Bill Frentz Cup with their name on it. Right now, I I would say the biggest threat for the title is maybe Kyle Larson. So unless, so we'll talk about more about my playoff predictions between when Corbin Hedgeland is going to be on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about more about my playoff predictions in that episode actually. We're going to statistically look at all 16 playoff drivers. Actually, um, for a warning, that episode might be a little bit longer than usual. Because we're going to look at um, statistics about the run in the playoffs. And we're going to predict what round they're going to leave on. with the, And, I, and I'm going to have a playoff bracket probably printed out on my desk or something. And fill it out as we talk. Um, I'll be right back with our controversy of the week. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here about what happened on this last restart. So this is the last restart. Austin Jones on the as we can see, Austin Jones on the inside, Joe Logano's on the outside. Okay, they're in the restart zone. Logano clearly has a better restart than Austin Dillon. I will add something. We saw Logano beat Dillon back to the line. Now, if this was the regular start of the race, it would be a penalty. But since it wasn't, it, since it was the first, since it was the third, only the third restart of the race, since it was a restart, Logano is allowed to beat Dylan to the line. But Logano went in the zone, but Dylan, but he made sure that Dylan was the first to be out of the zone. Anyway, you know, that's it play. So Logano is trying to squeeze Dylan down, and then he happens to clear. Dylan off of turn two. Okay. He happens to clear Dylan. As he goes, as they go around three and four. Looks like Logano's running away with the win. He's running away with it. Logano. Does build a little bit of a gap here. Builds a little bit more of a gap as they exit turn two. And they go down backstretch. Now, in order to make. I'll add something. In order to make it through just fine in Richmond is you do have to let off the gas just a little bit. We have probably about four, let's talk about two or three car lengths advantage for Logano here. Entering turns four. And then Dylan goes up and spins Logano. That's okay. I'm okay with this part. I'm okay with just bending somebody out for a win. We have seen it a number of times. This was more of, probably of a bump and run kind of move. Well, if you look at what Dylan immediately does, he clip, he right hooks Denny Hamlin, boom, right into the wall. Goes Denny Hamlin. Want to watch the Hamlin wreck? Spins Logano, and then right here, right hooks him. 
The spotter said, I will, I probably should have it included since spotter audio here, but the spotter of Austin Dillon, wreck him. Said, wreck him. Wreck him. Wreck him. Like three times to Austin Dillon and caused Austin Dillon to win this race. And to, you will hear me, you will hear if he's actually going to make playoffs with this win or not. Um, spoiler alert, NASCAR today said they're not going to, and there is additional penalty. So, that's controversy number one. He won this race, I think, in an unfair way, and I'm glad NASCAR put the foot down today. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's go and take a look at what Logano did. So Logano's driving pit row after the race like every other driver does, and except for Austin Dillon, Austin Dillon somewhere in that smoke cloud is somewhere in that cloud over there, doing some burnouts. And he accelerates about right here towards the Richard Childress Racing crew, and I think he almost hit Austin Dillon's wife. I agree with both. So yeah. Those are my thoughts on those two, these two incidences. Alright, let's go ahead and move over to the Truck City side of things regarding our race results. Alright, we got Jerry Bowman, who finished dead last in this race. He was a little too slow. Matt Mills, 35th. Keith McGee, 34th, 33rd. Thad Moffitt, Dean Thompson, 32nd, Connor Jones, 31st, Nick Sanchez was 30th, 29th was Connor Selich, Mason Maggio was 28th, 27th was Justin Carl, Mason Massey, 26th, to Fusion, 25th, 24th was Spencer Boyd, Bailey Curry was 23rd, 22nd was William Wallach. 21st, Brett Holmes, Chase Purdy, 20th, 19th, Timmy Hill, Wallace Allen was 18th, Wajal Groove, 17th, Corey Heim, 16th, Matt Crafton, 15th, Gaden Honeycutt, 14th, 13th, Jake Garcia, 12th was Tana Gray, 11th was Stephen Parsons, 10th was Connor Hall, Ty Dillon, 9th, Daniel Dye, 8th, Ben Rhodes, 7th, 6th was Tyler Ankrum, Fifth was Lane Riggs. Fourth was Grant Ampinger. Third, Tyler Gray. Second, Chris Nekis. Ty Majeski was our race winner. Our stage one results consist of Raja Roof. In tenth, ninth, Nick Sanchez. Eighth, Corey Heim. Seventh, Matt Crafton. Sixth, Daniel Dye. Lane Riggs, fifth. Fourth was Lane Riggs. Sixth, yeah. No, it was Ben Rose. Third, Grant Ampinger. Second, Tyler Gray. Christian Eckes was our stage one winner. Our stage two consists of Connor Jones was 10th, 17th, Tyler Gray, Tyler Ankrum 8th, Rajal 7th, 6th, Ben Rhodes, 5th, Corey Heim, 4th, Lane Riggs, Daniel Dye 3rd, Christian Eckes 2nd, Grant and Finger 1st. And what, um, with our standings in the truck series, we are looking at... Now, with the point reset, this is what we're looking at. Daniel Dye is out just by two points. Ben Rhodes is out by one. This is in the round of ten. Tyler Gray is up by one. Tyler Ankrum plus five. Graham Finger plus five. Raja plus seven. Nick Sanchez plus 16. Ty Majeski plus 21. Chris Nikos plus 36. And plus 39 was Corey Heim. That's our truck series playoff field. Let's go ahead and watch the two laps I did. I mean, analyzing from Michigan. All right, let's. Ow. Let's run these two laps here. So, Michigan is a pretty fast lap track. I'm running roughly about 190. Now, if we go off to turn one during the race, we'll see we'll see these speeds higher than what they are. We saw the miles per hour drop a little. That's how, that's how it is at every track. 
Now, Michigan, their, their motto is, it's your speed. Speed limit is your speed, however fast you can make your car go on Michigan International Raceway during like a race or something. I've seen races to where the cars have been 220 miles an hour. Now, for the hell of it, at the end of the second lap, I'm going to do something. I've done an international race here a couple of times. So, hey, I beat the goal here because I, my foot was on the floor basically the whole time. As you can see, though, I'm racing. I'm practicing as the latest race winner in Michigan. No, the latest race winner, which was Austin Dillon. Now, here's the thing. Even though he lost the playoff spot, you will hear me say something about that here in just a couple minutes. But, there's a cool thing about Michigan. And if I'm ever a NASCAR driver, I'm going to do this in real life. And Michigan's victory lane. Where is victory lane at Michigan? Oh, we're going to drive there right now. We're going to be turning our last lap, last lap of the race. Didn't mean to do that. Michigan's victory lane is right here on the front straightaway. And this is something, what you're about to see is something I have done a few times here. We're not gonna do a super long one, but ah, I can't do it. I can't do it right. But yep, Michigan's victory lane's right here on the front stretch. So thank you guys for watching the two laps. Now let me go ahead and talk about the playoff now. After watching my two laps, so we can go ahead and discuss playoff eligibility. So. Recently, NASCAR changed the rules. It was a win and top 30 you were in. But recently, they changed the rules now to where if you win, you can go fight for a championship. Honestly, I think they should have kept it. Kept the rule, up, especially after what happened we saw earlier with the controversy of the week. And um, there has been penalties regarding the incident that we just the incidences we saw um, and I know earlier when we were watching them I said I would discuss penalties towards the end of the drug of the thing well there were penalties Austin Dillon uh, spotter is suspended. He's fined, I think, 25 I got to look at the penalty again. $25,000, or was it $50,000, and 25-point deduction in points. Richard Childress Racing already released a statement saying that they are planning on to appeal the penalty. I do not see the penalty being appealed. It's a little too obvious what he did was wrong. You don't tell somebody to wreck. You don't tell your driver to wreck somebody. And he did it twice in the same corner on the same lap. I do not think this penalty is going to get appealed. On the other hand, with Joey Logano, he, he got a $50,000 fine. And he, Joey Logano has already made the statement he was in the wrong. He is not going to appeal the penalty. And I think he said that he is going to go ahead. No, he is going to go ahead and pay the $50,000. Knowing Joe, knowing probably how rich Joey Logano is, he can probably go ahead and pay that penalty tonight. No, he can probably go ahead and pay that penalty tomorrow at NASCAR, at the NASCAR headquarters. I bet he can go ahead and pay that penalty. And... <clears throat> I think it's a dumb move by Richard Childress Racing to try to appeal the penalty. I mean, it was a little too obvious to us that what he did was wrong. So, I do not see this penalty being overturned. My picks for the week consist of, I don't have them exactly memorized, but definitely Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano are my picks to win Michigan. They have... 
they have a little, a little bit of a reputation of winning there. Team Penske has a reputation of winning in Michigan. So has Roush. So I chose both Roush guys to win in Michigan this weekend as well. I felt like Brad Kozlowski is going to finally get that, finally become the Michigan driver to win at home. So I do think Brad Kozlowski is going to finally get himself a win. And then Chris Buescher, obviously, he's our defending winner at Michigan. Kyle Larson, three of his forced first four career wins came at Michigan, and he ha- does have a win at at a, at the other track that is similar to Michigan. He does have a win there, which was Auto Club, and so I would expect Kyle Larson to have a good day there. And then also Martin Truex, the guy who finished runner up, had a really good shot at winning this race last year. So, um, look out for him. And then the guy I think is going to pull off an upset is, I'm going to have to go with Ford here, with Noah Gregson. Because, like I said, Ford is, has a reputation of winning in Michigan. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, favorite. Be nice, go be awesome. Your fate, donate, see you later. Check flags in the air.